Exploring the Boundary Waters and having the knowledge to do so is a huge privilege. I've already made videos on what gear to pack to the Boundary Waters and some adventures that I've done. This video I'm going to answer some of the most frequently asked questions that I hear or see pertaining to the Boundary Waters. The question I see a lot about permits is, what is it? There are a lot of nuances around it, so I'm going to explain permitting quickly in this section. Permitting, basically you go to recreation.gov, you decide the date you want to enter the Boundary Waters and who your trip leader is going to be and your watercraft. Are you going to use canoes or kayak? You put that information in and then you get a permit for a specific day to enter the Boundary Waters at a specific lake or specific entry point. And then on that date you have to enter then. You can't enter the next day if there's bad weather. You have to enter the Boundary Waters on the day that you reserved your permit for. So once you have your permit, you have to pick it up the day before you enter the Boundary Waters. I think you have 24 hours to pick it up. When you go to pick up your permit, you will have to watch a video and then go through a little quiz on some of the other rules about the Boundary Waters. So do some research ahead of time so you're more prepared. Another frequently asked question is, do you reserve a specific campsite in the Boundary Waters? And the answer is no. You might enter the Boundary Waters at the location that you chose for your permit and not find a campsite on that lake. You might have to portage to another campsite, which means carrying all your gear along a trail, hiking with your canoe and all your gear to another lake to find a campsite there. And maybe you won't find a campsite there either. It does happen that people don't find campsites. If you go during the busy season and you go into the Boundary Waters and you enter into the Boundary Waters at not a great time of day, it's kind of a sweet spot, right? You don't want to be too early, you don't want to be too late. Once you find a campsite, you can camp there. You don't have to have a specific reservation for that campsite. How can you tell if it's a campsite? If you show up to an area that looks like it's cleared out and people have hung out there, to know that it's a for sure a campsite and you are allowed to camp there, there will be a fire grate. Uh, probably iron? I don't know what they're made of, but a black fire grate. And oftentimes there are like logs that the Forest Service or whoever has put around the fire. Don't put more logs there, just like use those. Um, and then there's also going to be a latrine. So there'll be a little trail. Sometimes the trails are hard to find, sometimes they're not. You'll follow that trail and there will be a pit latrine. That's the bathroom. So that's a campsite. If there's no fire grate and no latrine, it's not a campsite and you can't camp there. Can you bring a gun into the Boundary Waters? Technically, yes. I've never brought a gun. But you can bring a gun into the Boundary Waters. So if that's something you want to do, definitely do your research around that. But it's not necessary. How does the bathroom work in the Boundary Waters? The pit latrine that you can use is just a pit latrine. There's no walls. It's not like a whole outhouse in the woods. It's just a latrine that you sit on or squat on. You can put toilet paper in that, but you can't put feminine products or garbage, other things. Fish guts don't go in the latrine at all. I have a whole video about what to do if you have your period and you're going on a Boundary Waters trip, so reference that video for more questions about Feminine hygiene in the Boundary Waters. As far as bathrooms, you just go and use it. Uh, one tip that I can give is you can have some kind of signal for your camp group if you've got a bunch of people to let them know that there's somebody in the, the bathroom, in the bathroom, outside going to the bathroom um, by putting some kind of paddle or something at the end of the trail when somebody's using it. Can you have a fire in the Boundary Waters? Yeah, you can. I love having fires in the Boundary Waters. I love cooking on fires in the Boundary Waters, but there are some times when there are fire restrictions or fire danger that you're not allowed to have a fire. So you're gonna wanna be informed and ask that question when you're picking up your permit. Be prepared to not be able to have a fire. I've never gone in the Boundary Waters without bringing um, like propane or isopropyl to like cook on because first of all, sometimes you don't wanna start a whole fire to like make a cup of coffee. Second of all, maybe you'll show up and the day you're trying to enter the Boundary Waters, you find out there's a fire ban and you just want to have that with you. What are some things that are not allowed in the Boundary Waters? First of all, firewood. Don't pack and bring firewood with you into the Boundary Waters. If you're going to have a fire, you are going to go and find the firewood dead, down, smaller than your arm, forearm, sized little logs. That's what you're going to burn. And you can find little sticks and things and some little brush or whatever to help start the fire, but you, you're, you're not allowed to bring in your own firewood. Also, that'd be a lot to carry and really heavy if you're portaging. <laughs> you're not allowed to bring glass or tin cans, so if you want to bring in beer to the Boundary Waters or if you want to bring in a beverage to the Boundary Waters, take it out of a glass or tin container and put it into like a plastic water bottle or an algae. There's a lot of other things that you're not allowed to bring into the Boundary Waters and I will be making a video specifically talking about the things that you're not allowed to bring into the Boundary Waters. So that's coming shortly. 
how long can you stay in the boundary waters? You could stay in the boundary waters kind of as long as you want, as long as you don't leave the boundary waters and go back in, but you can't stay at a specific campsite for more than 14 days. So you have to switch campsites. So if you really wanted to stay in the boundary waters for a month, you could do so. You just have to move campsites um, and you can't leave to get more supplies and come back in. Like you have to stay in the boundary waters. What should I pack for my boundary waters trip? That's a big question. And there's a lot that goes into that. I can't tell you what you should pack, but I can tell you what I pack. And I actually made a video talking about what I pack into the Boundary Waters, and you can use that for reference, but everybody's different. Obviously, if you have special like needs for your body or things that are just non-negotiables, like you are going to bring an air mattress and a pump, like do it, do it, I don't know, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. But you could check out my video on what I pack to the Boundary Waters on my channel. Do you need a guide while you're in the Boundary Waters? No, you don't need a guide. But I recommend the first time you go into the Boundary Waters, you either go with somebody that you know that has been in the Boundary Waters before and has experienced it, or you hire a guide. And there are different guide services. If you are looking for a guide, email me because I actually do guide trips into the Boundary Waters. You could jump on the newsletter that we send out with our guiding and information and things and see if that's right for you. There are lots of options. Probably the first time you're gonna want a guide. Mother Nature can be a beast and it's definitely nice to have somebody who has experience. Let me know in the comments what other questions you have and maybe I'll make a follow-up video. If this video has been helpful for you, please hit the like button. It means a lot to me and also subscribe to my channel so that more people can see and enjoy this content.